We wait with bated breath to hear about all the technological marvels that will be unleashed upon the world at CES this week. Our next story is all about how cutting-edge technology can truly be life-changing. Absolutely. This is a very touching story. It's about two people whose lives were changed by tragic injury and how technology is giving them some freedom. <laughs> Teresa Hannigan and Robert Blue are about to do the unimaginable. Both paralyzed below the waist, they're not only going to stand, but attempt to walk one mile, thanks to the Rewalk, a robotic exoskeleton from Argo Medical Technologies. That's the first time I've stood for the national anthem since I've been paralyzed. It's the first time. Today they're walking not just for themselves, but to raise money for hope for the warriors. Right to this line. Teresa hits a good pace early, but Robert is struggling. Then. A loose bolt stops Teresa in her tracks. Ready to go? It's not the start they expected. <laughs> but they're used to things not going exactly according to plan. It's going to take a lot more than that to stop me. December 14, 2007, I was the architect for Goldman Sachs World Headquarters in Lower Manhattan. Seven tons of steel dropped from a crane onto my trailer and I was basically folded in half and crushed from neck down. An autoimmune disease prematurely ended Teresa's military service. And they went from my lungs to my circulatory system, my circulatory system to my liver, my pancreas, my kidneys, and now it's in my spine and my brain. It looked like neither would walk again. Um, that was, to me, a death sentence. I couldn't see myself living like this. Just adjusting the straps here. Amazingly, they discovered Dr. Ann Spungen and the Rewalk Research Study here at the James J. Peters VA Medical Center in the Bronx. I will say in the 22 years that I've been doing spinal cord injury research, I have not seen an intervention that has had the impact that this device has had. Initiated by a wristwatch remote control, computerized motors and sensors lift them to a standing position. I didn't know what to expect. I couldn't feel my legs. And when I stood up, that fear changed to, it was a phenomenal experience. Here they are strapping me in, pressing a button, and I am standing. And I was like, oh my god, no way, no way. Exoskeletons that rely solely on robotics tend to be very rigid. The Rewalk's onboard gyroscope allows users to walk more naturally. When you lean forward, the tilt sensor, just like on a Segway or our, on our smartphones, will tell the computer, hey, she's leaning forward. Let's have that signal go down and have that leg take a step forward. So I'm basically shifting to my left yep. in order for my right leg to initiate. One of the first big tests is measuring the distance traveled in six minutes. 139 meters. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That's excellent. Good. Other challenges include walking on different surfaces like carpet or metal ramps. And then there's the ultimate obstacle, a staircase. Pull forward. Forward onto it. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. yep. It's like a walk in the park. <laughs> of course, going down can be a lot more intimidating. You feel so high when you're standing because I can't feel my legs. Their progress is slow, but huge. Robert, yeah, did nice. you ever think after your injury you would ascend and descend a flight of 14 stairs? It would have been very difficult in a wheelchair to do so. Teresa has no sensation in her legs, so she lets the machine move her effortlessly. But Robert's brain still has some connection to the muscles, and that can make things harder. It's so difficult for me to tell myself, okay, but let the machine walk without my legs activating. But there is a surprising upside to all his effort. I've been informed that my muscle mass has increased by a, a pound and a half. I've lost about a pound of fat mass in my legs. My bone density hasn't depreciated for that period. Even simple acts become monumental moments. To stand up and be able to actually put Somebody putting their arms around you again? <sighs> that, 
after taking this program, you know, I, my life, you know, you know, it was an improvement in the quality of my life. This has been a highly emotional program. Uh, we have, all of us have shed tears at any number of occasions. <laughs> And today's race is no exception. Back on track, Teresa and Robert feed off the energy of the crowd and make it to the finish. Another impossible milestone achieved. Having, them, having this exoskeletal program is one of the most uplifting experiences I've been through in my career. It's a life-altering experience. It gives every one of us that are in a wheelchair hope, hope to be able to have a more independent, and that's the key thing, independent life. That, and to keep setting goals. I hope one day I, I'm able to regain some functions to be able to actually walk on my own legs one day. And I, I think this would be a bridge to it. Great job. Right. What I love about this story is you have an unintended consequence from a technology that's even better than the first idea. I mean, here you're trying to help people walk with the help of an exoskeleton, and what ends up happening is they start getting healthier as a result of using it. That's right. There are all sorts of side effects of being in a wheelchair. There's uh, digestive issues, there's obesity, metabolic syndrome, all sorts of things that come along with that. And this technology is actually helping with those as well. It's really cool. Teresa has lost 35 pounds. Her kidney function has come back. Robert's gaining muscle mass. This is really fantastic in a bunch of ways. It's, it's just a feel-good technology story. All right.